Hello there, neighbor. We've got six good stories for tonight. The links and timestamps for which you can find in the description down below. First story of the night is, of course, the titular one. It's all about Spider-Man 2. So, as I'm sure many of you are aware, it sold phenomenally well and was critically acclaimed across the board. Sold a grand total of 9 million copies as of January. Now, as I'm sure all of you have are very well aware, I've already spoken about the PlayStation 5 quite a few times on this channel. And we already know that it is going to come out at some point next year. Regardless of when it's going to come out next year. That being said, we also know if you follow technical information at all, you know that designing and writing a video game and all that takes an extremely long time. On the order of years, writing a, designing a good game is going to take roughly on the order of three to five years. Like beginning to end from planning to production. It's going to take a few years. Even with a crack team, it's going to take a few years. That being said, don't expect this game to come out anytime soon. That being said, we do have a, a couple little teasers and tidbits to check to keep an eye out for. The first of which is known as Swarm, one of the lesser known villains in the MCU, however still a villain in Spider-Man's world nonetheless. One thing we can also keep track of is the fact that this will also be brought forth by Insomniac Games. And in case you didn't already know, Insomniac Games is a developer which has worked with Sony extensively over the last two decades. Their history extends all the way back to the PlayStation 1 days when they designed the original Spyros. And of course, those were worked with by uh, Toys for Bob in order to create this remake that some of you may have tried. So Insomniac knows by now, or at least should, how to optimize their game and, and the process inside it in order to use the system it's on to the best of its abilities. So obviously we're going to see a remarkably stunning and, well, groundbreaking game in Spider-Man 2 when it actually does launch. However, because we only just received Marvel Spider-Man last year, don't expect this thing to see a trailer of any kind until maybe E3 2021, assuming there's still an E3 around that time. So, you know, don't hold your breath for it, but it's, go it's going to come, just not anytime soon. This next story isn't quite as impressive in its own right, however, it's still important in some way. So, in the East Chinese city of Nanchang, there exists a virtual reality theme park, wherein there are 42 different rides that will give you a unique lifelike experience. While money is still a, a very volatile issue there, the Chinese government as well as some of the local governments seek to ease that issue because the Chinese government as a whole believes virtual reality to be part of their 2025 economic growth plan. This is important for a couple different reasons. First, we may see a, a couple new systems and software pieces coming out of the Chinese government, or Chinese country, I should say, as well as the, the simple fact that this is not the first time that I've touched on virtual reality arcades in some way on this channel. That being said, because this isn't the first time, it can easily be interpreted that there may be more 
arcades or theme parks or something along those lines coming to the United States or, well, just the West in some capacity. When those may come, it's hard to tell. Just because we need that market to grow. We, we need that money coming in. But, well, it, it's still coming in, but it's growing relatively slowly. So we can likely expect something along those lines. Well, probably around the mid-2020s. Maybe, maybe even here, the maybe even by 2022, somewhere along there. So if you guys really feel like money is an issue there, don't fret. There may very well be more arcades coming to the U.S. Do you feel like you and aliens? Do you want to fight your friends? Do you want to fight your friends and aliens at the same time? Well, then guess what? I just may have the game for you. This game is called Space Ops VR, due out in May. And in this game, you can solve the Earth's impending energy crisis. You can fight aliens at the same time. So guess what? Get this game! It comes out in May for Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality. Links down below. This next story is slightly smaller, but still nonetheless cool. So there was a... Twitch streamer by the moniker of Apollo, who had recently done a 24-hour stint on the VR game Minecraft. Personally, I didn't even know a VR Minecraft existed, but nonetheless, here we are. This guy broke records because not only was it 24 hours, but everything he did in the game, he mirrored in real life, or vice versa, I think. So whenever he ate or took breaks or napped or anything... Not only did he keep his headset on, but he did all that stuff in game too. He ended up finishing it out with not only fighting the Ender Dragon, but la launching some fireworks and watching a digital sunset. Kind of cool. Because personally, like I said, I didn't even know Minecraft and VR existed. It's one thing I've been wanting to play like forever, but well. Because I can't find a VR Minecraft, I don't play it. But I guess one exists. So, you know. This next story is all about a game that's going to be releasing on Tuesday for the PlayStation VR that already exists in the Steam store for the Vive and the Rift. It's called Box VR. You do something similar to what the name would suggest, and that is box your targets. If, you've al if you're already familiar with the title Beat Saber, then this game is just going to fit right in. The primary difference between Box VR and Beat Saber is that rather than attacking your targets in, on, on the side in one direction or the other, you attack them straight on. So you'll still be dodging walls and attacking your notes or whatever and dodging the walls. So, be ready for that. comes out on Tuesday for about $20. So, if you guys feel like checking it out, then's your chance. And now for the final story of the night. As I'm sure many of you may know, this Saturday, May 4th, is Star Wars Day. And in honor of this very special momentous day, The Void, a location-based entertainment platform, is doing very special one-day discounts on their Star Wars game, the Star Wars Secrets of the Empire. There are six locations within the contiguous United States. Those are Santa Monica, California, Glendale Galleria in Glendale, California, Downtown Disney in Anaheim, California, the Grand Canal Shops in the Venetian and the Plaza Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, Disney Springs in Orlando, Florida, and Cinemark West Plano, Texas. This experience is far different than most of the VR experiences and entertainment that I talk about on this channel. Point being, you'll be able to play as part of a team of four. You try to lead a rebellion, or not really lead, but 
follow a rebellion, travel to Mustafar, and sneak upon a base disguised as stormtroopers. In this 30-minute experience, which normally costs $30 individually, you'll be able to use blasters, solve puzzles, and run into characters that you may already recognize throughout the Star Wars universe. And as a part of this experience, you will have to work together to succeed. So you will need friends! Or you may not. I, I don't know who you're going to work with there. You may run into, like, strangers and make friends. You know? All for friendship! Power of friendship! So, I think that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.